Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about the assemble, accumulation, and dividing of parts using a uh, promodel and its uh, commands like join, load, and split. We're going to be simulating this process. We're going to divide an entity called a uh, roll into 10 metal sheets. Then we are going to assemble two gears with one metal sheet and the resultant product or the finished product will be loaded in a pallet in groups of two. That's the situation that we are going to uh, simulate with a uh, promodel and uh, these new commands. We need uh, some more information for this uh, process to be simulated. First of all, uh, the arrivals. We have uh, 10 rolls per hour, 100 pallets per hour, and 100 gears per hour. And for the process, uh, when we split, when we divide something, it's going to uh, take uh, 1.45 minutes with an exponential uh, distribution. When we join parts, when we assemble these parts, uh, it's going to be uh, three minutes with a standard deviation of one uh, according a normal distribution. And when, when we load something, uh, it's going to take 30 seconds. The first question we need to answer ourselves is how many entities do we need? For this, we are going to use the next uh, diagram. In this diagram, we can identify the rolls, the gears, the pallets, the metal sheet, the resultant product or the finished product. So we have one, two, three, four, five entities. And this is, this is a, a representation of the process. We have uh, the rolls arriving. Then we split the roll into 10 uh, metal sheets. We join the metal sheets with the gears that arrive at another uh, workstation. When we join the metal sheets with the gears, we form a finished product, and this finished product is loaded into pallets in groups of two finished products for every pallet. And the pallet with two finished products, uh, they exit the process. Just as a summary of uh, the join, the load, and the split commands that you could uh, learn watching uh, the other three videos, we can uh, remember that for the join command, first we need the join command and later the operation. For example, a wait. One entity in process and a different one in routing. For the load command or the load and load command, it doesn't require an operation, but we need to use in to tell the time take in the load process. The same uh, entity is in process and routing, and load doesn't need an, uh, uh, an a specific time because it's going to take the same time that we use on the uh, load. And the unloaded entity requires a new process and routing. And for the split command, first we uh, program the operation, then we program the split command. After the split command, we need to indicate the new entity produced using as. For example, a split, uh, when we split the row, we are going to tell uh, ProModel to split uh, 10 as uh, metal sheet, that would be a, a good name for the entity. The output of the new entity is in a new process, not in the routing. For example, what do we want to find out about this uh, process? We can find out how many finished products exit in 24 hours. And another uh, a 
aspects that we can find out is that there is much more pallets exceeding than products. We need to find out why and what is the, the time in the system for a finished product. How, many, uh, how much time do we spend finishing uh, a specific product? And we are going to build uh, this layout, and, but I'm going to change uh, to Pro Model to explain this situation. We have this layout in Pro Model. First of all, we need a location for the roll to arrive with an infinite capacity because we don't want uh, entities to not be able to enter the process. We need another location for the arriving of the gear and one uh, last locations for the arriving of the pallet. We need a location for the splitting part of the process, the, the cutting of this roll into metal sheets. We need a different location to the assembly part, the, the joint uh, part of the, of the process. And the last locations that we need is where we uh, load the finished product into uh, the pallet. Now I'm going to show you the entities. We, need, we needed uh, five entities, the roll, the gear, the pallet, the metal sheet, and the finished product. Then we build the arrivals. And this is the information that we had in the description of the problem. The rolls arrive 10 every hour. We have 100 gears arriving every hour and another 100 pallets arriving per hour. Now we go to the process part of this uh, problem. And we are going to explain it. First, we have the roll at its arrival location. Then it goes to uh, the cut or the split uh, location with the first available rule. Then the roll goes to the cut location. When it's in the cut location, it performs the next operation. It waits 1.45 minutes with an exponential distribution and it split the roll into 10 uh, metal sheets. In the routing part, we have nothing because we have a different entity created from the splitting of the uh, roll. So in a different process, we have the metal sheet that it's in the cut location and it goes into the assembly uh, location with the first available rule. Now we go to the gear. The gear is in the uh, arriving uh, location and it goes to the assembly location with the rule if join request. It's going to be joined with uh, the metal sheet and it's going to be two gears per metal sheet. So as uh, the metal sheet is only one, it's the one that calls the, the gear. So the gear moves to the assembly location if it's a, a join request, if there is a join request.
Now we are going to return with the metal sheet, the metal sheet that is in the assembly location, the operation that it that it uh, performs. It waits uh, a normal distribution time of three with a, a standard deviation of one minute, and it joins two gears. So when in the operation part for the metal sheet, we have joined two gears. This means that the metal sheet is going to join with two gears. So this is the joint request. And in the routing, we have a different entity. When we join two gears with one, with one metal sheet, we have product as the entity that exits that part of the process. So the finished product or the resultant product, it's uh, going to the load location. And the rule that it's going to follow is if load request. Why? Do we do this uh, way, this this uh, this activity this way? Is because uh, now the another entity is going to call two two uh, products to be loaded. So we always uh, follow the the entity that calls the other one. So product is going to wait for a load request to go to this destination. Then we're going to go with the pallet. The pallet is going to be the one that it's going to call uh, via a load, the, the load command, the, the finished product. So the pallet that it's in its uh, arrival location goes to the load location following the first available rule. It doesn't uh, need anything for uh, the pallet to go from one place to the other. And then the pallet in the load location, what it does is it loads two in 30 seconds. The load command doesn't specify uh, which uh, entity it's going to load because we only have one entity that it's uh, going to that uh, location following a load request and that entity is the, the finished product. Then in the routing part the pallet exits following the first available route. And this is the, the, the complete uh, programming for the situation that we were uh, following. Now we are going to specify the simulation options. I'm going to go to this uh, window here. I'm going to simulation and options. And we are going to simulate 24 hours. We can simulate more or less hours. I'm just uh, choosing this quantity uh, to uh, see how this situation performs in uh, the simulation form. So we go OK, then we go to simulation and we should save and run. We can run this or we can use this button right here. So it's running and it stops at 24 hours. It says if, I, if we want to see the result, of course we want to. And we have this. If we see these results, we have to, to be uh, sure about what we are following. Because we have 812 exits for the gears. 2,400 exits for the pallets, zero exits 
for the metal uh, sheet 405 products and 41 rolls exceeding but the finished products that we are following are the product and the pallets the pallets exceed the the, the process with two finished products on them so if we uh, seek this relation of uh, one pallet for every two products we are going to see that we have uh, much more pallets exceeding than products so we can be sure that if we divide 405 products that exceeded uh, we divide this by two we are going to see that we have 202.5 pallets exceeding the 0.5 is just a, a, a calculation but what, what we can be sure is that 202 pallet exceed because it has uh, two products on them the 0.5 is that we only have one product and we need another one to put on the pallet so we can uh, finish the process for that uh, for those entities and what we can say is that it uh, it exceeded uh, 404 products in 202 pallets the rest of the pallets that, that, that exceeded the two, uh, 2400 minus 202 are pallets that can perform the operation so the the software exceeds those entities because they can be waiting anywhere else so when they want to perform an operation a load operation and there are any uh, products to load the the software exits those uh, entities to give room for the the next uh, entities to arrive and perform the operation so how many finished products exited this uh, 24 hours we can be sure that 404 because the 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 one that is that is uh, missing the uh, is because it's waiting for another product to arrive to be loaded into a, a next pallet. If we want to see uh, the average time expended in this process, we are going to be following the average time in the system for the pallet because the pallet is the one that has the uh, products uh, on them. So the finished product that is one pallet with two uh, finished products are uh, taking 25.24 minutes to exit the process okay so we are going to leave this analysis here and i hope that this was uh, useful for you